In the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I really like the hike. And when I can, I like the backpack. I also really love getting ready to go back up. I find laying out all the gear that I need for the trip and carefully tucking it away in various pockets is very satisfying. I also love knowing that whatever I pack to eat, however unappetizing or odd it may seem when I pack it, will taste amazing after a day of it. Little packets of dried beans turn into a feast on the trail, a dry protein bar melts in your mouth, and no joke, if you haven't tried it, Please consider peanut butter on top of summer sausage after a long hike. <laughs> I found myself thinking about backpacking as I read our lessons for today. The Israelites, the disciples, and Paul are all on their own kind of backpacking trips, or at least they're on the road in some kind of way. And these lessons are all about God providing nourishment for the journey, both physical and spiritual. They are, simply put, about how God provides. In our Old Testament reading, the Israelites are complaining the wilderness that they're hungry, and God provides bread and meat. In the Gospel, the disciples, having just seen Jesus multiply the loaves and fishes, ask that he continue to provide one of them. In our third reading from Ephesians, Paul describes the gifts that God provides to us, gifts we are called to use in the church and the world. These are stories that call us to gratitude, that remind us that God loves us, and that the gifts we are given are gifts from God. But what I actually find most interesting about these readings is that they are not just simple stories of God giving away things. They're not stories where humans have a need and God simply fulfills it and everyone goes away full and happy. They are stories about the way in which God provides. And they are about our role and our relationship to God in light of God's generosity. In Exodus, the Israelites are wandering in the wilderness for the two months into their journey out of Egypt and into the promised land. And they're hungry. In fact, they're starving. And they complain to Moses that maybe they never should have signed up for this trip. Maybe it would have been better to stay in Egypt, where at least they had food to eat. This is a story of communication with God and of relationship. The Israelites ask for food, God hears them and provides them with bread. But it's more complicated than that, since God's gift has strings attached. It's actually a test that comes with instructions. God tells Moses that each day the people must go out and gather only enough food for that day, except on the day before the Sabbath, and they were to gather twice as much in preparation for the day of rest. There are things the Israelites must do to participate in these gifts from God. From this reading, we are reminded that we are in relationship with God and can ask for God for ask God for what we need, even when it feels like complaining. It is also a reminder that God's gifts come with instructions, and that we treat God's gifts, including the earth, with responsibility and care. In our reading from John, we see Jesus right after he's multiplied the loaves and fishes. He's left the crowd behind, but they come looking for him. These followers are trying to figure out what they have just seen. How was it that Jesus could do this miraculous thing, and what are they getting to do it again? They asked Jesus, what must we do to perform the works of God? They seem to want to be able to perform miracles themselves. They want a piece of the magic that made the loaves of fishes multiply. But Jesus doesn't always be with them. Instead, he tells them that the work of God is to believe in him. They ask another question, wondering, what sign are you going to give us then so that we can believe? They seem to want as dramatic a sign as the bread that appeared to the Israelites at the wilderness. And as often happens in these moments, they ask questions and Jesus doesn't quite answer them. Instead, he tells them, I am the bread of life. Whoever believes in me will never be hungry or thirsty. Often, 
then the gifts we are given from God aren't exactly what we had expected or bargained for. Like Jesus' followers, the requests we make in prayer or the questions we pose to God aren't always answered, or at least in the way we do. God's gifts may not be as tangible as we like. They may not take the form we had hoped for. They may be less concrete than we want. Sometimes what turns out to be a gift may not seem like it at first. Jesus tells us in this gospel reading that we must do the work of believing, the searching, the waiting, the listening to the movement of the Spirit in our lives in order to find God's gifts. In the Ephesians, we are told that we all have unique gifts. Paul tells us the gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. He goes on to say that these gifts work like parts of the body. Each one has its own role, but as a whole they work together and allow the body to be healthy and grow. God provides us with gifts, but we must use them in a way that knits us together in relationships of interdependence with each other, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. This letter is a reminder that the gifts that God provides for us also come with a responsibility to use them well, and that as Christians we are called to use our gifts together, working with and for one another and following the way of love. All of our readings today invite us into gratitude for the gifts that God gives us. They're stories of God providing, and they are an invitation for us to sit in wonder at the manna from heaven, to give thanksgiving for the bread of life, and to be grateful for the gifts and talents we carry with us in our lives. At the same time, though, these readings invite us into relationship with God. Through prayer, communal worship, Sabbath, and yes, sometimes even by complaining to God, we are opening ourselves up to a life of Christ. We have, and continue to collect, the provisions and gear we need for the spiritual journey. At the very least, I think we need a sense of humor and humility for those moments when we realize we planned far too ambitious a hike. We need honesty for those moments when we make a wrong turn and need to change course. We need compassion for ourselves and others in those moments we are tired or struggling and need help. And I think we need the ability to listen, both to the people who we hike with and the still quiet voice that guides us down the trip. So this week I invite you to think about your own spiritual happiness. What do you already have that you are carrying with you? What provisions and gear are you seeking to add? And how might you go about gathering that gear with other people? Thinking back to my backpacking trip and my love, love of packing, the reality is that even after we gather our supplies and get ready, we still have to go on the journey. And on that trip, there will inevitably be times when the bugs are bad, or we'll read the map wrong, or we'll fall and twist an ankle, or we're simply exhausted and wonder why we went hiking at all. <laughs> but the more we have done to prepare ourselves for the journey, to surround ourselves with companions who will cheer us on, and to watch for those moments when we see a glimpse of the far horizon, the easier it will be to remember that our backpacks hold the provisions that God has given to us.